Hello, I'm David Clark. I'm the Managing Director of DVC, and I'm going to take you on a quick tour of EDIUS 8. EDIUS 8 is released at the end of June 2015. And what we have here is the very first version of EDIUS. It will undergo some changes during its life. Grass Valley has said they're going to add a lot of new features into it as it progresses. So it's vaguely possible if you're looking at this in a few months' time, it doesn't look exactly the same. This is what EDIUS 8 looked like when it was first released. OK, so here I am. I've got a computer here running Windows 8 and I've installed EDIUS 8 and I've got two new icons on the desktop, one of which says EDIUS 8 and one of which says Grass Valley Browser. The browser is a completely new program that they've put with EDIUS for browsing around your computer and finding files. We'll come to that in a minute. First of all, I'm going to have a look at EDIUS 8. So I'm just going to open it up and you'll see, apart from a nice fancy new splash screen, a project opening dialog box, which is pretty much the same as it was before. Start off a new project, choose a preset, give it a name, and then you're into EDIUS. And you'll see probably the biggest change on this first release of EDIUS 8, which is a redesigned interface. If you've been using EDIUS 7, this will look quite a bit different to what you're used to. However, Although it does look different, it's basically pretty much the same, just with a different front end. So if you're used to using EDIUS 7, you won't have to relearn anything to use the new interface of EDIUS 8. Why has it changed? Well, this is one of the major reasons for bringing EDIUS 8 out right now. EDIUS 7 looks fine on a regular HD computer screen, but we're starting to get a lot of computer screens coming out which are bigger than HD going up to 4K resolution of 3840 by 2160. And if you use EDIUS 7 on one of those, you'll suddenly find it looks absolutely terrible. It doesn't scale properly at all. Now this is something that's in common with an awful lot of different programs. Adobe changed all their programs with the 2014 version of the Creative Cloud. Avid still haven't changed theirs. Grass Valley are changing theirs with EDIUS 8. So the whole purpose of changing the interface is basically to make it scale properly on higher resolution screens. Now we're talking about 4K screens here, we're not talking about watching video that's filmed in 4K. We're talking about just how your computer screen displays the picture. If you have a 4K computer screen, everything should be a bit sharper and a bit nicer. It does have the added benefit that if you're happening to film 4K video that you can actually look at it in the full quality. But the point is really, it's just giving you a better looking computer screen so your pictures look sharper and so on. This is different to actually editing 4K video. Now EDIUS 7 already edits 4K video, EDIUS 8 does the same thing and a little bit better. When it comes to scaling on 4K screens, I find Windows 8 is better than Windows 7. Actually EDIUS 8 scales properly on Windows 7 as well, but I think if you're starting to use things like 4K screens, you should seriously be thinking about using Windows 8 or Windows 10, which is due to come out pretty soon. The whole interface itself is obviously grey, which is pretty standard for most editing programs. As before, you can just come into the user settings and go to Windows Color and then change it. I tend to like to go for a slightly darker looking display. This is the default as it comes out of the box. I find that's okay if you're in a room that's not too brightly lit, which is what most editing suites tend to be. But for most uses, I actually like to go a bit darker. So I find about minus 20 or even minus 30 for me gives me a nice looking look. In terms of the windows themselves, basically you've got exactly the same layout as you would have had in EDIUS 7. Similar range of buttons along the timeline here. They've been redesigned slightly, so these icons are slightly different to the ones that were in EDIUS 7. Actually, these look a lot more like the kind of icons that you would get in Windows 10. Now, Windows 10 hasn't come out yet, but we have got a preview version. But looking down here along the taskbar, you can see the look of the standard Windows icon icons in Windows 10, and that's looking a lot more like the new icons they put inside of EDIUS. But apart from a new look, basically the whole thing works pretty much the same as it did before. So obviously you bring in clips, double click on a blank space, bring in a clip, shove it onto the timeline, it either goes as an audio and video clip, you split it up and the audio and video are separate, you can open it up, see the waveform and so on. Now in EDIUS 8 the sound is divided up a little area with the words and then an area with the waveform. And in EDIUS 8, you've got to come and click on the section with the words to be able to trim the audio. You can't click anywhere on the edge of that clip. It's got to be just the section there where the words are. And I have to admit that got me when I first started using it. And then I went back to EDIUS 7. Again, I've just got to grab the bit 
where the words are if I try and grab anywhere else it'll actually move the clip I've got to grab the section where the words are and the only difference between EDIUS 7 and EDIUS 8 is that the words are at the top in EDIUS 7 and they are at the bottom in EDIUS 8 so apart from that most of the interface you'll find is pretty much the same as it was before just looks slightly different anyway I'm going to go off and I'm going to just bring in some footage so I've got some clips in the bin and you can see the bin display has slightly changed and one really nice change because everything is now thoroughly scalable is I can make these icons as big or as small as I like so they're all now completely scalable in any of the views so here's the new tile view that came in sort of halfway through the life of Edius 7 and then you can pop into detail view and again you have large icons or small icons but that's a really welcome change and I really like the new thumbnail view myself. Apart from that, the project window works pretty much the same as it did before. It's just nice to have really scalable icons. Obviously you just double click on it, then you look at the thing, you mark an in point, mark an out point, drag it and throw it onto the timeline. On the mode bar here, got all the same icons I normally put in there. I've got a stereo clip here. Changing this will either put them in both on the same track or split them out to be the left and right. If I just want to have one of them, I can turn it off, and as soon as I drop it onto the timeline, I end up with just one of the audio tracks on the timeline. Again, all that's exactly the same as before. The other button that I've got on here that we haven't had on our standard setup in EDIUS 7 is to do with rippling markers. And so I've thrown in a few markers there. If I go to the marker window, you see you've had this little anchor column here. And you can see you can change these markers between anchored and not anchored. So if I say untick anchored for number two, which is that one, the difference is basically if I was to chop something out on the timeline, marker number two's moved. The other ones didn't. Let's turn off anchor for number three, do the same thing. Number three and number two's moved. So what you have basically is rippling markers, and this just turns that on and off. So if I was to turn that off and do the same thing, the markers don't ripple. It's just a nice thing to actually put on there. It's sync locks for markers rather than sync locks for tracks, which is what this lot is. But again, all I've done is put that on the start bar. Everything else, pretty much the same as we used to before.